So it's pretty well known that I'm a Vim guy, and I have been a Vim guy for probably four years now. I started Vim probably about a year after I started using Linux. And I will not say that I'm really good at Vim. I'm horrible at Vim. I've gotten way better, but I'm still really, really bad at it. Like, notoriously bad. Like, every time I do a racing video or something where I'm spending some time in Vim on camera, there's always someone in the comment that says, Matt, this you can do this way easier by doing whatever, whatever in Vim. And, like, a lot of times I know that trick that they've told me in the comments, but I just forgotten about it or don't use it or for some reason, whatever. Or I didn't know about it because there's so much to Vim and I'm convinced that nobody knows everything about Vim, probably even the person who created Vim. I'm assuming there are some things in there that have kind of gotten forgotten about over the last probably 20 years or so. The point is, is that I'm a Vim guy. I'm very much a person who enjoys Vim, so much so that I make fun of people who use Nano and Emacs. Those are just things that I do. So <laughs> I shouldn't do those things because you can use whatever you like to use and... I'm sure that people who use Nano feel very efficient when they use Nano, and those people who use Emacs love playing Tetris, so much so that they've decided that they need a text editor that can play Tetris. I'm sure all those things are true, and I shouldn't judge them. I do judge them, but I shouldn't do that, and I know that. That's a personal flaw of mine. All that being said, all that lead-up leads us to the fact that there are other text editors out there that I either haven't tried or haven't tried enough in order to give an opinion on, and one of those text editors is called Micro. Now, Micro has been described to me as a better version of Nano. Now, I don't think it has to try very hard to be better than Nano, but that's just my personal opinion coloring everything. So, I should hold that stuff back and actually try Micro. So, I've been asked several times to try Micro, and I finally did. I've spent three or four hours today messing around with Micro, so I can't say that I'm an expert on it. I'm Probably never will be, but I do have some thoughts and some things that I like and some things that I dislike. So what I thought I'd do today is take a look at the micro text editor and compare it a little bit with my beloved Vim. Let's go ahead and jump in. So here we are in a terminal and in order to get to micro, we just type in micro. Now this is what micro looks like and out of the box, it is a fine looking text editor. It has numbers along the side, it has a status bar along the bottom and it has a couple shortcut keys along the side here underneath my head that it kind of tells you how you need to do stuff if you need some help. And that's a good thing because out of the box, there are some things that you're going to need to know in order to actually use this thing. So things like Control G will get you to the help page. It'll bring up a split that has all of the help that you'll need. Now, I'm going to start off this entire mini first look, first impressions thing with something negative. I almost always start with the negative things because those are the things that kind of stay in my head throughout the entire time I'm using it. And the biggest negative for Nano, at least for me, is that their documentation is not all that good. Uh, it has fairly good documentation in terms of like key bindings and stuff like that. So if you do Control E and then type in Help Default Keys, it will show you a list of key bindings that you'll need to know. So if all you ever need for help is what the key bindings are, it does a fairly good job. It's when you get into the commands and stuff like that that is a little bit lacking. But my biggest complaint about it is that there it's not a codified help system. So you have to know that the default keys thing exists. So you have to read that initial page, which is not a big deal. But it also has a, a tutorial, it has a command section, it has an option section. Everything is in its own little place, and you have to know those things exist, and you have to navigate to them. What I would really prefer is a man page. So if you do man micro, you get nothing. There's absolutely no man page. There's no man dash dash help that is all that really all that helpful. It does have a few things here, but it definitely doesn't show you everything that you could possibly know. And it's just the basic help section with some flags and stuff. It doesn't have the documentation. Even if there wasn't a man page, I'd like it if there was a website or something that had all of the documentation on it. I couldn't find that thing. They do have this tutorial here that is on GitHub, and it's not bad. So if you do need to get to a all-in-one stop for some help, this is a good place to do it. But it's still something that I had to search out in order to find. It's not something that is readily available unless you know where to look for it. So the documentation really is 
probably my biggest negative when it comes to micro, but I wanted to get that out of the way so we can talk about some of the things that are positive because there are some things in micro that I absolutely adore and I'm going to miss when I go back to Vim. So let me talk about a few of those. So the first thing that I really like about it is autosave. If I go back into micro, so if I go into help and then options, one of the first options that you see here is autosave. And what this will allow you to do is set up your text editor to automatically save every so many seconds. And if you are a writer or a programmer, autosave is something that you can quickly take for granted if you've ever used an IDE or a markdown editor or something like that. Any like GUI editor, almost all of them have some autosave functionality. And if you get attached to that and then go into an editor that doesn't have it, it can seriously cause you some problems because you expect things to autosave and they didn't and you lost all of that work, it can be disastrous. Now, most of that is going to be blamed on you because you should learn to save on your, by yourself. That should absolutely be the case. Always hit whatever save key binding that you have to save your own work. You should definitely do that. But auto save in case you have a situation where your computer crashes or you lose the electricity. Hopefully that doesn't happen because I just knocked on some wood there. The, you know, any situation where maybe you were in between saves for you know, in between manual saves, auto saving is a really nice feature. And I'm not sure if Vim has this functionality. I think it does, but I've never actually looked into it because, well, I'm lazy, but I don't remember it being default for sure. So that's the first thing I like. The next thing I like is that it has permanent editing of options inside the editor. And this is something that I know Vim does not have, or at least it doesn't have it by default. So if I wanted to set any of these options, I could do so right from the editor here. And while you can set options in Vim from the command line or from the command section at the bottom in Vim, you can do that. They're only applicable for that buffer. Once you've closed out of that buffer or closed Vim, those settings go away and they get forgotten. If you want to make permanent settings, you have to go into your VimRC. With Micro, you can make any change. You can set any of these options right here from the command line. or I call this thing the command line. With When you hit Control E, you can do like set auto indent like so and then false, you know, if you wanted to. And not only would that setting be changed for this buffer, but it would also be saved to your .config slash micro slash settings .json file. And that change would then be permanent until you changed it again, which is amazing. It reminds me a lot of Qt Browser. Qt Browser, you can make any changes you want inside the browser and it will change it in the config file itself. This does something similar, which is really nice. Another thing that I really like about Micro is that it has way better copy and pasting. Out of the box in Vim, Vim does not interact with your system clipboard at all, unless you do some extra tweaking in order to get it to actually do that. Out of the box, Micro will allow you to copy and paste anything you want. So with the mouse, just copy this and then hit Control C and then it's in your keyboard buffer. So I can go back up here and hit Control V and it pastes the thing that I copied. That is amazing and not only will it paste in the micro, but also paste into Firefox or anything on the system because it actually uses your system clipboard. And that means that there's no extra things that you have to do in order to get that to work, which is very nice. And kind of on top of all that, you just saw me do something that you would never see anyone do in Vim. And that is to take their mouse, highlight something, hit control C, go back up here with their mouse, hit control V. <laughs> the mouse is something that you don't use in Vim. You don't use it. Now you can set it up so that it works, but it's always kind of janky. With Micro, the mouse is a first class citizen. And while I don't think I prefer using the mouse, it's definitely something that works really, really well. So the idea of being able to highlight the stuff that you want to copy and then copy it and then paste it is really nice. And being able to put your cursor wherever you want with the mouse also really nice. Obviously, if you are a Vim master, you can be very quick moving the cursor around with just key bindings. A lot of people are. I know I have gotten way better at that, but a lot of people who are mouse-centric users of their computer would prefer a text editor that does really well with the mouse. 
Micro is one of those. So probably the thing that I'm most impressed with when it comes to Micro is actually the theming capability that it has. So out of the box, it comes with about 10 or 15 themes or so. Some of them are duplicates and having to do with how many colors your terminal supports. So there are three different versions of Grubbox, or maybe two. One of them's True Color, which is like this, this million color variant. One of them is 256 colors. You use whichever one will work with your terminal. So it comes with several different themes right out of the box, which is very nice. However, the best part about this is that you can create your own themes. Now, you can create your own themes in Vim. I don't want to hear anybody say, well, you can do that in Vim. That's true, but if anybody who's actually tried to make a theme in Vim from scratch, you will know that it is not easy. So, trying to figure out where each setting is actually going to be applied, you have to know all this different Vim script and all this stuff, it's not a easy process. Besides, Vim has four different ways, at least, of theming something, and you can use them interchangeably. It's not a well-documented process. It's just a mess. When it comes to Micro, all it is is something that looks like this. That's 23 lines that encompasses an entire theme. You use the color dash link to tell Micro what you want to color. So in this case, the default color is going to be those numbers there. If you want the comments to be a certain color, you say the color dash link comment and then the color you want to be color dash link constant, so on and so forth. Each one of those things is specially defined what it is. It's easy to tell for the most part and you just give it a color code. And that is extraordinary. It's very, very nice and you can create as many themes as you want. They're just about 23 lines long, and once you know what each of these parts here actually apply to, so underline, special, type, things like that, it'd be very easy to create your own themes. Again, not something that you can easily do inside Vim, especially if you haven't ever dealt with Vim script or Lua or any of that kind of stuff before. One thing that I was surprised about when I heard about M Micro is that it has several things that Vim kind of takes for granted. So things like splits is here. So right now we're actually looking at a split. This is a horizontal split. It also has vertical splits. You can do the same thing. So you do would do colon E to get into the command mode and then type in V split just like so. And then you'd type in the file name of whatever you want and it would come, as, come up as a vertical split. So it has splits. That's something that Vim has and I use quite often. Another thing that Micro has that I didn't expect it to have is tabs. It has tabs. So you can do control T and it opens up a new tab. And Vim has tabs, but you have to set them up in order to use them. Or you have to know the default key bindings, which you need, means you need to go into the Vim help system and try to find out what those things are, which is not always an easy thing to do. And the default key bindings for Vim tabs are all over the place. They're not very good. So you have to kind of change those in order to make them good. In order to get to a, this tabs here, you can use your mouse if you want to. You can switch between tabs with your mouse. It's really nice. There are key bindings, obviously, that you can use in order to go between tabs. But using your mouse is, you know, what most people do to switch between tabs. So the fact that it has tabs is awesome. The last thing that I really like about Micro is that it has an excellent list of key bindings. So if, again, you search you do command E and then help and then default keys. It will show you all the key bindings. This is the help page that you'll spend the most time on uh, because it has all the key bindings that you'll need to know in order to use this thing. The thing is about the key bindings, and I should mention this, is that if you've ever used a word processor before, you know a vast majority of these key bindings. So things like uh, control Q is for quit, control S for save, control F for find, page up, page down, moves you page up, page down, uh, control W, if you're familiar with Vim, is actually the first part of a key chord that gets you between splits. In here, it's just Control W moves between splits. And it goes on and on and on. Most of these key bindings are very, very self-explanatory and ones that you're probably familiar with from other word processors that don't have the Vim hang-up of using the Vim keys for everything. So if you are the type of person who doesn't want to go about learning all of the Vim stuff, this is a good option for you. Now, Let's talk a little bit about how this compares to Nano. I would say that saying this is a better version of Nano is an insult to Micro because Nano is very, very bare bones. It can do some things. There is a configuration file for Nano. I didn't know that until 
about six months ago or so. I don't know anybody who uses it, but I'm sure there is someone. But you can configure Nano to do other things, like set default wrapping and stuff like that. You can do that really easily. But there's a lot of stuff that Micro does that Nano wishes it could do. Things like tabs, things like splits, things like a plug-in support system, which I didn't even mention because I didn't really look at it. But it exists, right? Nano wishes it could do all these things. So comparing it to Nano, not really all that fair because it doesn't really share all that much in common with Nano other than it doesn't use the Vim keys. I suppose that's one commonality. So if we compare it to Vim, then we're going to come into some places where Micro really doesn't add up. Things like macro support. I don't know if it has macro support. I did not find it anywhere in the documentation. So I'm assuming that it does not have macro support. So that's something that will definitely keep some people away. The bifurcated all over the place documentation is similar to Vim actually. Vim has that too, but at least if you want to, you can find Vim's documentation online really easily. And Vim does have a man page, so you can go through some of the stuff in the in the man page. Uh, also comparing it to Vim, it doesn't have Vim key support. So if you are coming from Vim and coming here, get prepared to use the arrow keys. Because the arrow keys move around all the time. Either that or be prepared to use your mouse. Both of those things are kind of anathema to every Vim user. You don't use the arrow keys, you don't use your mouse in Vim. You don't do those things. In fact, most people, most professional Vim users, including me, I suppose, they actually disable the arrow keys so you can't use them. You'll get an error if you try to use them. Especially if you're in insert mode, it'll start putting in weird characters and shit, right? Uh, so that's what you do in Vim. In Micro, you use the arrow keys all the time, and if you're not prepared to do that, you're not going to like Micro. So let's talk a little bit about the three things that I don't care for. One of those things that I, is I talked about at the beginning, the odd documentation that is all over the place and the lack of documentation outside of Micro. I don't really care for that all that much. It is okay documentation. It's not the best documentation I've ever seen, but it's sufficient. It's good enough to get you going and the key bindings are so familiar to most people it's probably not going to be a big problem that there isn't a ton of documentation here but it does show you all the options that you need all the commands that are available uh, the one thing that i couldn't get to work is search and replace it has a couple lines for how to do that but i couldn't figure it out maybe it was just because of odd placements of single quotation marks i'm not sure which ones you're supposed to use it does support regex for search and replace so you can do that it also supports supports regex for search so you can do that as well it also does the same thing that nano and vim both do all out of the box they have this really weird wrapping by default so if you have a line here I, i'm gonna try to find a way to do this so we're just gonna type in some nonsense I mean, this is this this is really nonsense. You see how this wraps by default? It's the same way Nano does it. And if you've ever used Nano, you can go when you go down to the next line or you go up to the next line. You can see it just kind of runs off to the side for infinity and beyond. That's not good. I hate that with a passion. It's one of the reasons why I hate Nano. I can't stand it. Now I know you can change it. You can change it in Micro too. But by default, it does that. And if it was just my files, like my files that I use that have all this stuff you know that's fine like I can I, it's not fine I don't like it but it's in the help documentation too so there are places in the help documentation that run off into the side of the terminal and th unlike nano which if you ever use nano when something like this has a more stuff off to the side there's a little arrow that shows hey there's more of this stuff here jackass go search for it you know press the arrow key until you get there uh, with Micro, there's no arrow here, so you can be reading along, and unless you actually, you know, move your cursor down here so it will move you to the end, or if you're actually at the home, if you, you actually have your cursor at the home position in the, fir in the first line, you have no way of knowing unless it just kind of reads weird that there's more stuff there, right? It's annoying, and that should definitely not be the default. I hate it with a passion. It's just so, so bad. It would actually honestly keep me from using Micro because that one piece there would... I have a specific way that text wraps in Vim so that it will actually move on to the next line just like you would if you were you know, in a regular word processor because I, I used Vim for writing for several months and I wanted, wanted it to wrap properly. The thing is, is that when you are actually moving a file that was written in Vim that has that special ramp, uh, wrapping into a text editor that doesn't do the wrapping, it still considers all those paragraphs that you had very neatly wrapped in Vim as just one line. So 
when I opened up some of my documents in Micro that were paragraphs in Vim, it came across all those things as just one line here in Micro, and it, they all ran off into the side of the screen, and it was not good. So you definitely will want to change the wrapping in Micro if you use this for anything that is going to be in terms of like long lines, I suppose, is how you'd say that. So those are the things that I really don't like about Micro. I listed a whole bunch of stuff that I did like, so I think that I was fairly fair when it comes to actually using Micro. There are some things that I really, really like. That theming capability, the ability to create your own themes really easily with no-nonsense crap programming languages is really, really nice. I wish Vim had something like that, and maybe there is something out there that I just don't know about. I'm sure there are, like, Vim theme creators or something that I don't know about, but the, the point is, is that none of them are that simple if they even do exist, and I really like that about Micro. The better mouse support... <laughs> I think that I could get used to using my mouse in a text editor again. I really do think I could, could do that. I'm not sure if I want to do that, but I could. The two things that would keep me from using this, honestly, as a day-to-day -day text editor, is the lack of Vim keys. I really like the Vim keys. I don't want to have to use a mouse or anything like that. Although I could probably get by without those. I know that they're working on adding Vim support, so that's something to look forward to. But the biggest thing is that horrible, horrible word wrapping that they have going on, or lack of wrapping at all. Uh, I couldn't stand that, and even changing it, would it just, in the back of my mind, I would know that that thing still, that still exists, and it would just not make me happy at all. It made me feel a little bit dirty about using it, to be honest with you. The tab support, though, is fantastic, and I really like the key bindings. I mean, I like really, really like the key bindings, so much so that I think I'm going to go back into Vim and try to copy some of the key bindings. Imagine being able to use control S to save instead of having to do command W. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if that I'd use it, but it reminded me so much of when I used to use an office suite that it kind of made me happy again, even though I hated using an office suite. So it's those, ty those types of things that, you know, kind of made me happy. Like control F to search is very nice. It, it's so intuitive that I didn't even realize that it should be there because I I didn't, I was thinking, it took, I spent about 20 minutes searching for a command to search. Like, because there's a command to replace, right? There's a command to replace and, you know, search and replace. But there's not a command to search because there doesn't need to be. You hit control F, it searches for you. And that's the way it is in pretty much every GUI application. I did not expect that to be here. So I was quite happy with that too. So there are some key bindings there that I'm probably going to try to use in Vim. Though I don't know why. I probably never use them because I'm so used to using slash for search and uh, control W or colon W to save. Yeah, so I probably don't need to do that, but I might do it anyway. So that is micro. If you have thoughts on micro, you can leave those in the comment section below. I know there's probably a ton of stuff here that I did not cover. This was not a tutorial or a all in depth thing about micro. I just want those are very much my first impressions. So if you have stuff in micro that you really like or if you've never used micro maybe you were considering it leave those comments in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you you can follow me on twitter at the linux cast you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linux cast just like all these fine people thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all amazing people i can't even i mean seriously just amazing amazing people so thank you for your support I can't even begin to say how thankful and grateful I am. So thanks for that. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.